This is an American boy, wounded in action 10,000 miles away from home just seven days ago. These are Japanese, dead Japanese, with speedy attention they might have lived. To these enemy mothers, their sons have come home in wooden boxes, white wooden boxes filled with ashes. Yes, there's a difference. In healing the sick and wounded of this war are military doctors, but high faith in two drugs not found in bottles. The first was speed to bring men back to the United States. The second was that invisible prescription no druggist can compound, but which can only be brought to a bedside by a mother, a wife, or a child. This one, for instance, like most trips home, his starts from the firing line. These are the medics, the corpsmen, first aid, the guys who get shot at but never shoot back. They fight with morphine and bandages and splints, a stretcher, shoe leather, sweat, and blood. Blood pumped to the Pacific by and from the American heart. Remember when you gave that blood and came back to give it again and again? So this boy came back. Your blood bought his ticket. First stop back of firing line was battalion aid, where the doctors worked. Family doctors, specialists, surgeons. From Mayo's, Johns Hopkins. From home, town, and city. Who transferred their practice to Biak, to Borneo, to the islands of Japan. They set the fractures and sewed the seams. Offices open day and night. Diagnosis. Compound fracture of the tibia with multiple laceration. Surgical. Immediate. Treatment. Note the diagram for doctors on the journey home. No confusion possible. No mistakes permitted. Name and number, date of injury, and treatment. Each man got a scorecard he carried all the way to California. From the islands and the warships, beachheads, mountains. Halfway round the world for this boy, from the jungles of Burma to Bangor, Maine. In wartime medicine, distance was no longer a disease, nor time a poison. We found the cure. Air evacuation. Wherever the wounded lay in the field, there was always a doctor a short hop back. Wherever they fell that a plane could land, a plane did land, and we flew them out. By land and by sea, and back home by air. From China, Mindoro. From the islands of Japan itself, we shipped by air. Marked urgent priority, perishable, rush. Out of the smells and sweat of the battle bound for a cool, clean land called home. Evacuation of our casualties by air was SOP in all theaters of war. SOP means standard operating procedure. This was our airborne ambulance, the C-54 airplane, cruising at around 180, flying 3,000 miles nonstop if need be. We had over a thousand C-54s crowding the Pacific airfields to fly the wounded home. No argosy of mercy like this was ever launched before or even dreamed of in the history of wars. This C-54 took off from Okinawa. Next stop, seven and a half hours south-southeast the island of Guam. Change here for Kwajalein, Honolulu, San Francisco, and points east. Most of the men landing in this airplane from Okinawa were wounded in action from 12 to 20 hours ago. They had flown 1,900 miles nonstop over open ocean. Here, each case was reconsidered by the doctors. Questions asked and answers noted. Diagnoses double-checked, x-rays taken, special surgery, every GI got a bath, the full treatment. And here at Guam was raised the all-important question. Should these boys go home, or should they be treated here and then return to combat? Barrett's from Texas. Which was it, Texas, or back with the Marines in the next task force? Anderson, Corporal John S., Dodge City, Kansas. Was it duty or Dodge City? The verdict was pronounced. A boy who could be well in two months, fully recovered and fit to join his outfit, stayed here, got well and joined it. Cases requiring two to four months care were hospitalized in Honolulu. 
The rest, requiring more than 120 days of treatment, were evacuated to the zone of the interior. Zone of the interior? Where's that? Zone of the interior. Zone of the interior. Zone of the interior. That's army talk for home. These boys got the green light. 24 hours or so after they landed, they were riding the forklift up into the plane. Inside, the litters stack up four high, each strapped and clamped as snug as an old brass bedstead. The C-54 will hold 28 men on litters. Though usually the payload includes some ambulatory cases, walking wounded. Two pilots fly the airplane with the help of a navigator, radio man, and engineer. Medical personnel, includes a highly trained technician and a guide, philosopher, and girlfriend, the flight nurse. So long to Guam. Kwajalein next, 1,800 miles. Eight hours more in the cool blue sky to a crescent set in an emerald sea. Since 1945, a gas stop, a place for lunch, and a pause for the doctor to make his rounds. An hour on the ground and they're off again. Another shot of the potent drug, speed. Speed to span 2,100 miles with a stop to refuel at Johnston Island, then Honolulu. Evening. The ocean world washed black by the tides of night. Up on the flight deck, the navigator worked on his charts. Mileage, airspeed, altitudes, wind. Hour by hour as the night wore on, checking the headings, keeping them true. In the cabin behind, the men relaxed, used to the sky after 2,600 miles. Sleep was the simplest trade with time, and some traded dreams soon to come true. Back by the tail rode the ambulatories, drinking hot java and beating their gums, retelling the story of how they got hit, and wondering what it'd be like to be home. Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Drumming on the old banjo. Hickam Field. It looked different through Japanese bomb sites on 7 December. The nose wheel reached out for American soil. Seventy hours had elapsed and some of these men fell under enemy fire 5,000 miles to the west. Touchdown, Honolulu, outpost of home. Unloading again for a check-in with the medics. Four to six hours on the ground, a bath, and more beefsteak. And then at last, final lineup for the stateside special. Goodbye to the islands, the beachheads, the jungle. Farewell to arms. Make mine America. Airborne and homeward hull, 2,100 miles, a scant 12 hours if the winds are right. The last night out, there wasn't much sleep. Home was a dream they'd held too long. Eyes at the window staring through the dark, trying to hurry the clock along. Most of them were happy. Some of them were scared. Dawn over California. There she is, son, all yours. And yours. And yours. The Golden Gate. Houses, backyards, streetcars, Hamilton Field, America, home. Gee, looks pretty good. Smells pretty good. Feels good. Yep, she sure feels good. Hamilton Field has its hospital, too. Not very big. Nobody stayed there long. Just long enough for a full examination and final diagnosis. A check was made for the Army Hospital nearest each boy's home and a telephone call put through. 
Your call to cancel is ready, Firefoot. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Mom? Well, this is Leroy. Yeah. Listen, Mom. I'll be in Denver tomorrow, see? Yeah, tomorrow afternoon. Will you meet me at the airport? Meet you? Tomorrow afternoon? Yes, yes, of course. And, uh, Leroy, uh, uh, do you want anything? Is there anything I can bring you? No. No, nothing. Now, listen, Mom. You go into Denver and go over to the Red Cross and tell them I called that I was coming. And they'll fix it up for you to get out to the airport. Oh, say, you might bring me a cake. Some of the boys preferred not to talk to their people right away or to see them for the first few weeks. Just a few lines, that's not okay. But most of them couldn't wait, especially if their families live close by. Hello. How are you, Angel? First chance to call you, hon. Sure, I'm fine. Well, I'm feeling great. Hello, honey. And now, the last lap. C-47s for San Diego, Sioux City, Jacksonville, Denver. The Purple Heart Express. You go into Denver and go over to the Red Cross and tell them I called that I was coming. For Des Moines and Fargo, New Bedford, New York. And they'll fix it up for you to get out to the airport. A boy in this airplane was wounded in action 10,000 miles from here on an island of Japan just seven days ago. He was evacuated by air to the United States where he will convalesce at Fitzsimmons General Hospital, Colorado, 25 miles from his home. It is said that the war is over, that we won it. This is not true. Only for these of our sons and husbands is the war over. For these, they won it. And these, the wounded won it. There were over 700,000. It'll cost money to put them back in business, a lot of money. They're buying victory bonds, won't you?